The Kami and the Oni. The Kami. Kami are nature spirits, intrinsic to the cultural landscape of Tianxia, a part of the Pathfinder world I haven't covered much in my videos, but which I'll be detailing in the not-too-distant future. This video is therefore one of the final chapters of my religion series, while also being a teaser for more things to come in the future. Primarily entrusted with the custodianship of natural elements and locales deemed sacred, dubbed their designated wards, Kami engage in an age-old conflict against the Oni, their corrupted brethren. Like dryads and their heart trees, Kami can merge with their designated wards, allowing them to clandestinely observe individuals who intrude on their consecrated domains. While they are known to demonstrate leniency towards those they perceive as benign, these spirits aggressively confront perceived threats. Kami are not born to a ward, rather they choose it, and as they grow in power they exercise autonomy in selecting new wards and can move from one place to another as they themselves change and evolve over time. For this reason, humans and other mortals in regions located near Kami often endeavor to entice their guardianship to locations that they deem in need of protection. The History of the Kami The Kami were created by the gods, shortly after the initial creation of the material plane. The gods did not, however, disperse these spirits everywhere, only in select locations, in part because only certain gods were involved in their creation, and in part because this period of the Age of Creation was highly experimental. The greatest concentration of them were placed in the Forest of Spirits, near the peninsula of Mingkai in Tianxia. These nature spirits were tasked with the sacred duty of sheltering the gods' creations, effectively to protect the natural world, but also to ensure that nature had the opportunity to multiply and grow. Taken through a certain lens, in fact, the kami can be seen as an invasive species. Not everything in the world is a kami, as there aren't yet enough kami to represent every individual object, plant, or animal, but filling this gap, however, is their eventual goal and kami fervently spread themselves across the lands in hopes of pairing every creation with a kami spirit. The gods, however, also established a set of labyrinthine rules, known as the Laws of Golden Perfection, which affect every aspect of the conduct of kami and their interaction with the world and its inhabitants. These rules have served to make the kami more defensive in their nature than aggressive. In spite of this, beginning in Minkai, Kami have since spread all over Tianxia, and even beyond, in compliance with their divine directive and their personal goals. The laws of golden perfection are no mere advisory set of edicts either. A Kami who falls from grace for having failed significantly to uphold the laws, or which has failed its ward because of negligence, is punished severely, and may lose its status as a Kami if the offense is serious enough. Most fallen kami accept this terrible fate if it comes to pass, becoming purposeless spirits who lack the ability to interact with the material plane at all. However, those who come to resent their status, or those driven mad by their homeless misery, become oni, evil spirits in the flesh. Oni exist in endless conflict with the kami, resenting them for the favor the gods show them, and for what the oni see as their misguided devotion to the divine directive. More detail on the Oni will follow on the back half of this video. One of the first significant encounters between the forces of humanity and the Kami occurred around the year 2612 AR in Minkai. In this time, the dragon god and sun god, Shizuru, ruler of heaven, had blessed a Tianmin human named Teikoku, thereafter known as Teikoku the Chosen, who quickly united the entire peninsula and ruled over it as Shogun. The Teikoku Shogunate was so ambitious and powerful that it was likely they would have continued to spread across Tianxia as an even more powerful empire than they already were, but their expansionist goals were stopped when the Kami of the Forest of Spirits forbade them from encroaching further into their lands. Teikoku was wise enough to recognize the power of the Kami, and knew he had hit his limits, settling on controlling the peninsula and developing diplomatic relations with the other major Tian powers of the day. It is through this careful diplomacy with the Kami that the Spirit Road was eventually constructed. This segment of the Path of Agenhe connects Minkai to Honggal, along the peninsula's southwestern coastline, and has become dotted with many small settlements. Officially, the Forest of Spirits is considered part of Minkai, but the mortal residents here live by a blend of traditions, as the entities they share this land with here are older than any nation. Close proximity to the forest and the kami have shaped the various spiritual practices and traditions of the people of Minkai. In Minkai, while many of the traditional practices of the Tianmin people have slipped somewhat in the major cities, in rural areas they continue to hold. 
In these rural farmsteads and fishing villages, the ancient rhythm of the day still holds true. Farming families rise to greet the sun, seeking blessings for their fields and orchards with the Hinode no Inori, the sunrise prayer. This practice dates back to the period when the Tianmin people felt strongly that Shizuru himself had granted them stewardship over the land by divine blessing. In the mountains and rugged areas of Minkai, or especially along the borders with the Forest of Spirits, the locals think in terms of symbiosis more so than stewardship, so the sunrise prayer is combined with offerings to the elements and the nature kami they share their world with. These acts of appeasement towards the kami continue to this day. Not all the history of the kami, however, is marked by successful resistance or cohabitation with foreign powers. The kami of the forest of Chuyokai, for example, have been completely wiped out or corrupted. This occurred when the god Fumeyoshi slew his brother Tsukio, and then stole his dying breath and trapped it in a shrine deep inside the Chuyokai forest. This dying breath corrupted the kami of the Chuyokai forest, and they became the grave kami, raging ghosts who haunt the burial sites there. They no longer abide by the divine laws, yet their hatred of oni persists, and the presence of any oni in their forest sends the grave kami into a killing frenzy. In more recent decades, the story of Fumeyoshi and Tsukio has been recharacterized as a tale of trauma and transformation when Tsukio was resurrected as the distant and contemplative moon deity that he is today. The grave kami of the Chuyakai forest, however, were not redeemed with Tsukio's return and continue to haunt that woodland. Kami Culture and Ecology Today Communities in Tianxia today exhibit diverse relationships with the kami, often influenced by their interaction with the surrounding environment. Settlements reliant on cooperative harmony with nature, like farming and herding communities, peacefully coexist with the kami. They frequently construct shrines and hold festivals to honor nearby wilderness areas, fostering a spirit of mutual respect. Conversely, communities engaged in exploitative practices, such as mining or logging, have strained relations with the kami. They offer appeasement rather than gratitude, fearing the spirit's wrath, and react harshly to outsiders who provoke the kami. Urban centers, inherently adversarial to nature, struggle to maintain connections with the kami at all, often resorting to symbolic gestures, like park construction or the growing of cherry blossom trees. Nevertheless, kami are not a monolith, and even communities hostile to nature kami may cultivate relationships with kami associated with inanimate objects, like the Zuishin warrior kami or the Dosajins. Urban scholars and craftsmen may develop cooperative bonds with specific kami, illustrating the many nuanced interactions possible within the varied cultural contexts of Tianxia. Significantly, it is worth noting that kamis are fundamentally a type of spirit, which is to say they are an unbound soul, not unlike a ghost or a wraith, given physical form directly from the natural world. Like other spirits, or even mortal souls, they can change and evolve over time. We've already discussed how fallen kami may become a grave kami, or even the dangerous oni, but similarly, human spirits can become kami over time, and this is especially common in Tianxia among elder druids. Likewise, there are plenty of stories where other kinds of spirits eventually turn into kami spirits. Consider the case of the Guardians of the Celestial Codex, an ancient volume of complex astrological calculations used for divination. These guardians are Tamayo Kimoto and Oseke-san, her kami companion who takes the form of a small man attached to her walking stick. Tamayo found Oseke-san in the Chinmoku when she was journeying to Hongal. He was a dead spirit then, trapped by his sorrow and resentment. While reasoning with the unquiet dead isn't generally advisable, she decided to ask for its aid to return to the path of Agenhe. Oseke-san followed her from that point on, and gradually his features became less wraith-like as he concealed himself in Tamayo's staff. Eventually he transformed into a kami, and she considers him essential to her duties as the guardian of the Codex. Kami can therefore be fickle creatures, technically adherents to the laws of perfection, but not bound by them, capable of making their own decisions and suffering the consequences accordingly. The common types of kami include... The Shikigami, or Garden Kami. Shikigami are kami of modest power and relatively widespread prevalence. These spirits commonly assume diminutive forms, sometimes appearing as if they are sculpted from wood or even paper, and undertaking the guardianship of modest artifacts, such as garden statues and vases. In this way, they are divergent from their other counterparts, who often find themselves bound to more significant natural locations. As Shikigami constitute minor spirits, they are occasionally susceptible to mortal manipulation. Tianmin landowners, for example, exhibit considerable enthusiasm in securing the services of a shikigami to safeguard their horticultural endeavors. 
Travelers who encounter natural landmarks imbued with shikigami regard such encounters as favorable auguries for forthcoming journeys. Shikigami possess nuanced perspectives concerning civilization and the inhabitants thereof. While steadfast in their defense of entrusted domains against intruders and desecrators, these kami rarely fight, and they exhibit a readiness to withdraw in response to environmental degradation or disregard for natural equilibrium exhibited by local populaces. Thus a shikigami epitomizes the delicate equilibrium between the encroachment of civilization and the imperative of preserving the natural ecosystem. The Kodama, or Tree Kami The Kodama are a type of kami of modest power that inhabit trees, but predominantly old-aged trees located deep in the forest, particularly those remote from human habitation. They are found most abundantly, of course, in the Forest of Spirits, in Minkai, where a profusion of Kadama inhabit the verdant expanse, rendering encounters with these entities a commonplace occurrence for travelers traversing the woodland territories. Despite their fervent efforts to safeguard their arboreal sanctuaries, individual Kadama pose minimal hindrances to adversaries such as the Oni, or others inclined towards forest desecration or exploitation for resources. However, their collective potency is much greater, especially when one considers the close camaraderie they share with other more potent kami. Kodama harbor no animosity towards individuals who exhibit reverence towards their domains, even extending hospitality towards druids and other respectful beings seeking solace within their confines. They may even subtly guide lost wanderers to safety, embodying a kind of benevolent guardianship of the natural world. The Zuishin, or Shrine Kami the Zuishin are characterized as the martial kami, and they undertake the solemn duty of safeguarding revered sites such as shrines, ancient gates, or sacred portals. These entities frequently find their station in secluded monastic retreats, pagodas ensconced in mist, or archways demarcating entries into clandestine sanctuaries. Equipped with formidable armaments and clad in resilient armor, Zuishin engage tirelessly in repelling malevolent forces seeking to defile their entrusted domains. Notably, their adversaries predominantly comprise the Oni, who frequently target the sanctuaries guarded by the Zuishin for desecration. Wielding potent weaponry such as swords and bows, Zuishin adapt their armaments to the nature of their wards and the rituals practiced therein. Given their wariness towards mortals, supplicants endeavoring to earn the trust of a Zuishin often provide offerings imbued with natural significance. While Zuishin may project an air of reserve or indifference towards human affairs, this demeanor stems from their profound wisdom and enduring existence, rendering many mortal concerns seemingly inconsequential to them. However, amidst fellow kami, they may behave in much less austere and even occasionally playful manners, and they readily extend assistance to their brethren in need. The Toshigami, or Blossom Kami The Toshigami are more potent and rarer kami entities. They tend to assume custodianship over cherry trees, particularly those situated in locales resonating with primordial natural energies. The cyclical process of blossoming, flourishing, and eventual decline exhibited by cherry trees serves as a poignant metaphor, mirroring the immense dominion wielded by Toshigami over the realms of growth, decay, and temporality. The Toshigami exhibit a peculiar fascination with mortals, with numerous folklore narratives recounting instances where these entities bestowed blessings upon individuals that championed righteous causes. In fact, tales of Toshigami intervening in critical moments across generations have fostered widespread reverence towards cherry trees, especially in Minkai. For many in those lands, the selection of sites for new settlements often hinges upon proximity to an ancient cherry tree, while deliberate cultivation and preservation of these arboreal specimens also occur within urban centers. Should a Toshigami elect to designate such a specific cherry tree as its ward, the ensuing communal benefits to the surrounding populace is met with great celebration. The Jinushigami, or Land Kami. Manifesting in towering physical forms, exceeding 40 feet in height and weighing over 30,000 pounds, the Jinushigami, or Land Kami, are the greatest and most impressive kami of all. They assume corporeal manifestations resembling colossal humanoid constructs comprised of earth, stone, and vegetative matter, occasionally adorned with idiosyncratic accoutrements like hats or jewelry. They wield authority over the elemental forces of nature and are esteemed for their formidable power and stature. These potent spirits command reverence not only from their brethren Kami, but also from the indigenous fauna inhabiting their territories. Endowed with age-old wisdom and discernment, Jinushigami exercise discretion in their interactions with visitors to their domains. However, hostile intentions or affiliations with adversarial forces such as the Oni nullify any leniency they may have, prompting Jinushigami to swiftly confront perceived threats. 
instances of displeasing a Jinishigami evoke drastic repercussions, as evidenced by their capacity to obliterate trails and manipulate the very topography of their terrain, subjecting travelers to arduous ordeals. These colossal entities exhibit scant tolerance for transgressors, swiftly dispensing retribution through either the agency of subordinate kami or their own tremendous power. In addition to these types, there are a few other breeds of kami worth quickly highlighting. The fukujin, or bonsai kami, are peaceful and resolute spirits that dwell within miniature trees. The dosojin, or travel kami, appear along paths, tracks, roads, and crossings. While a dosojin's ward is often a remote road or far-off trail, these kami are unusually social towards humanoids. The kaminari, or thunder kami, are proud, angry spirits that dwell within clouds or in the hearts of powerful storms. The suijin, or water kami, are serene guardians of lakes, ponds, and springs, and the grave kami of the Chuyakai forest I have already discussed in my history section, and they represent another kind of corrupted or haunted form of kami. Finally, there are the elder Jinushigami. Of all the kami, the Jinushigami, or land kami, are the most ancient and powerful, yet even among these immense outsiders there are variations in that power. Newly formed Jinushigami are towering entities whose wards comprise a vast stretch of territory, but a Jinushigami grows more powerful as the legend and fame of the site it guards grows. For example, a Jinushigami of part of a mountain range is impressive, but a Jinushigami whose region includes the range's tallest mountain is even more so. When a Jinushigami becomes this powerful, it is known as an elder Jinushigami. These kami lords are unique entities that defy conventional kami classification, and some among these can be considered demigods in their own right. Some may even have mortal worshippers as well. So far, only one of these elder kami has been given a proper name in Pathfinder sources, and that is Okojo kami, the kami of the Bunkatsu River in the Forest of Spirits. However, 1st edition's Bestiary 3 refers to four additional unnamed elder Jinushigami, which I have assigned to the most significant corresponding biomes in Tianxia below for your reference and use, but know that these details are inexact. Let's take a quick look at these kami lords and their natures, starting with the elder kami of the Bunkatsu River. Okojo kami. Of all the kami in the Forest of Spirits, the most powerful is said to be Okojo kami. Many consider him to be the primary guardian of the forest, because of his age and the size of his domain. In reality, Okojo Kami is the Kami of the river, with his head resting in the north and his two tails in the south. He is rarely seen, and is thought to only take physical form when not at rest. Illustrations of him depict him as a giant ermine, whose head crests the top of the trees and body runs the length of the peninsula. Plush fur as white as fresh snow covers him except for his tails, which are tipped with wiry black hairs that perpetually burn with a deep orange fire. His thick fur ends where his four legs meet the river, revealing dragon-like feet covered in scales that gleam like burnished red lacquer. Anyone fortunate enough to get an audience with a Kojokami will find themselves looking into eyes blacker than ink, and thick whiskers that flicker with the eerie blue light commonly seen outlining powerful kami. Some claim that he's related to the water dragons, and one scholar has been bold enough to suggest that Okojo Kami was responsible for punishing the ambition of Zaokoyu, a samurai who lived during the Teikoku shogunate who famously challenged the Kami and was destroyed for it. The Elder Glacier Kami To the north of Hongal lies the Tian Kiang, the Wall of Heaven, an enormous mountain range that shields the lands from the harshest winds of the crown of the world. Beyond the Wall of Heaven, an elder Jinushigami associated with a vast glacier inhabits the oldest and greatest glacier there. This ancient glacier carves through the northern mountains and runs along the polar coastline as well. When this elder kami manifests, and it rarely does so, it appears as a giant made of blocks of ice. An elder reef kami. The Sapphire Sound Reef is a magical cold water reef that is almost an extension of the Forest of Spirits. It is home to a wealth of aquatic creatures with large communities of underwater kami. An elder Jinushigami considers this sizable coral reef to be its ward. It is of immeasurable age, and when it rarely manifests, it appears as a humanoid constructed of living coral draped with seaweed. Not far away, the coastal city of Nokaichi began as a fishing village and sits where the tundra meets the tides of the Sapphire Sound. Although Nokaichi used to have a friendly relationship with the kami of the Sapphire Sound, those kami are now hostile to the fisherfolk, responding both to oni presence in the village and overfishing, which started to happen due to nearby Chu Ye's agricultural collapse. An Elder Mountain Kami The mountains of Huanggot are primordial, powerful, and deeply respected. 
Enclaves of Dokebi make their home there. Kami of various lesser orders and other similar spirits wander freely here, and the elusive Talije is said to create nests in the numerous caves and sprawling tunnels around the mountains. The most sacred of these mighty mountains is Halayun Mountain, said to be the place where the great sages of Huangot found a path to immortality. The great mountain kami of the sacred and most majestic mountain of Halion is rarely seen, a staggering creature whose scale and power beggars the mind, capable of turning the very mountain against intruders, or if needed, turning trespassers to stone with but a thought. An Elder Volcano Kami Atas Pulu is the northernmost region of the archipelago of Minata. It was once a single landmass before being shattered by the immense eruption of Mount Duyan. Even separated into a number of constituent islands, the region's rugged mountains are immediately recognizable as having belonged to a single range. The islands surrounding the volcano are called the Makasintahan Islands. Mount Duyan is one of the largest and most impressive volcanoes not just in Tian Xia but in the entire world of Galarian, and it is also home to an elder kami of staggering power made of equal parts molten rock and solid stone. The Oni the Oni are corrupted, malevolent spirits, typically corrupted kami, who assume humanoid forms to indulge in earthly pleasures and vices. Oni adopt various humanoid guises, often appearing as lumbering figures with monstrous traits, distorted versions of typical human forms. Once an Oni assumes a humanoid shape, it remains fixed in that form for its lifetime, its features often misshapen or grotesquely exaggerated. All Oni possess the ability to change shape to trick their enemies, though these alternate forms they adopt often have telltale signs bearing resemblance to their true monstrous form. An Oni typically forms when a Kami neglects its duties. In such a situation, a Kami risks the loss of its Kami status, potentially transforming it into an aimless spirit with no connection to the material plane. Some resent this fate and turn to anger, jealousy, despair, or other dark emotion, ultimately transforming them into the Oni. Rare instances also exist of humanoid souls, or other spirits being cursed and transforming into Oni as well. In stark contrast to the Kami, Oni despise their spiritual forms, yearning solely for a physical existence. They forsake bonds with the natural world, preferring humanoid companionship and mimicking humanoid forms. Once corporeal, Oni indulge in earthly pleasures, often dominating and exploiting mortal humanoids to satisfy their every desire. Oni and Kami are sworn adversaries. Kami view the Oni as threats to the natural order, and as failures in their divine duty. Yet that revulsion is also mixed with fear, as each Kami also fears their own potential for fall into Onihood. Oni in turn hold contempt for the Kami, viewing them as naive meddlers, obedient to the failed philosophies of the gods, and devoid of the courage to embrace true physical life. When a spirit undergoes transformation into an Oni, it begins as a disembodied, ethereal entity. The process an Oni goes through in order to manifest a physical body varies, but often this occurs in a place tainted by sin, tragedy, or cruelty. The type of Oni formed depends on various factors, including the spirit's nature before the transformation and the location of its emergence into the physical realm. Once manifested, an Oni remains bound to its physical form for life, save for the most powerful among them. Although incapable of reverting to their original form, Oni possess a mystical connection to the spirit realm, enabling tissue regeneration unless damaged by acid or fire. One of the largest concentrations of Oni in Tianxia is the spiral-shaped city of Shiragoku, which lies in the Darklands level of Sekamina beneath the Forest of Spirits. Pallid Oni rule this realm in a mockery of the kami above, performing unsettling rituals on themselves and their unwilling victims. The Oni here are not lone monsters of vengeance the service folk are used to, but possessed of an entire dark society. Here they seem driven to act in service to some greater purpose, performing horrible rites and tortures on those they capture and bring there. Those few survivors of their rites describe constant nightmares of spiraling downwards into an endless abyss. Whether part of a dark society like Shiragoku, or lone figures carving out fiefdoms for themselves among mortal societies, Oni universally embrace what they call the three pillars of Oni philosophy. Meikaga, achieving dominance, Keidakaga, punishing the undeserving, and Tezukaga, living hedonistically. While different breeds of Oni may define these concepts in different ways, these are the central tenets of every Oni's physical existence. The people of Tianxia became aware of the threat posed by the Oni almost at the same time that they began to become aware of the Kami, which is to say, dating back to the earliest written records and accounts of the people of that continent. One of the earliest accounts of the Oni can be found in the epic poem The Tayagama. 
The improbable saga of Jinsen Tayago and his astonishing war with the Oni, or more simply the Tayagama, is a myth cycle of a hundred poems preserved by Minkai artists and scholars for millennia. Parts of this ancient folktale have been converted into popular songs and plays. Its episodes are frequently the subjects of Minkai artwork, and many pithy bits of wisdom are actually drawn directly from this enchanting, if fanciful, legend. It tells the tale of a whimsical and work-shy farm boy in the fantastical empire of Mun, a thinly veiled stand-in for Minkai, who is recruited by Akami to battle the hated Oni, who, having conquered seven of the eight kingdoms of Mun, are intent on ruling the eighth as well. Tayago nearly always prevails through humor, perseverance, and happy accident. The final episodes of the saga involve the beloved hero's confrontation with four separate Oni masters, culminating in his defeat by the devious Ua Suo. However, the gods have come to have such an affection for Tayago that they strike down Ua Suo and cast the farm boy's body up into the sky, where he is transformed into a star. Every Minkai bard worth his salt has memorized the Tayagama and can draw liberally from its rich tapestry to enlighten his art. How much of the ancient poem cycle is drawn from actual history is unknown. Regardless, the lasting legacy of the Tayago is that it has served as a warning to all the peoples of Tianxia about the dangers posed by the Oni and how to fight them. Conversely, the Oni are relatively unknown in the inner sea region, and this often makes it a tempting region to visit, as these people are poorly informed about the threats they pose. The Types of Oni Like the kami from which they descend, the environment into which an oni is born has significant impact in terms of the temperament and qualities of a given oni. The following are the most common oni types. Mountain Oni Among oni, mountain oni stand as the most prevalent, and are often regarded as the least refined. Their connection to the spiritual realm is poor in comparison to their counterparts, as they focus solely on satiating their tremendous appetites. Sloth and gluttony are common vices among them, so much so that many will happily coexist with nearby settlements if kept well-fed. However, more ambitious mountain oni lead ogre war parties, or orchestrate violent bandit raids. Mountain oni tend to form communities, and while solitary mountain oni are rare, those that do exist prefer marauding the countryside, or exploiting villages and hoarding the spoils for themselves. Snow Oni. Unlike their mountain counterparts, snow oni embrace isolation, often displaying ascetic tendencies. Many pursue physical perfection, delighting in transforming their bodies into formidable fighting machines. Despite this, they remain as hedonistic and brutal as the rest of their kin, indulging in warm baths, strong drink, and humanoid flesh. Like some others of their kind, snow oni possess a mystical third eye in the center of their foreheads, granting them sight through even the thickest of snowfalls. Caldera Oni. As fiery as the lava that engulfs their domains, Caldera Oni crave the thrill of war. While they seek conquest and control, they also relish combat for its sheer exhilaration. Challenging a Caldera Oni but conceding before death may earn one mercy and the opportunity to serve alongside them, but only if the Caldera Oni found the battle to be a suitable challenge. Island Oni. Island Oni are natural pirates, staking claim to coastal islands, assembling armies of lesser Oni to pillage surrounding lands and waters. They are prone to amassing wealth, adorning themselves lavishly and outfitting their monstrous visages with jewelry. Scavenging sunken shipwrecks for resources, they sometimes encounter undead sailors, and they have acquired significant necromantic gifts, allowing them to enlist these dead soldiers into their service. The most powerful Oni, the Oni Daimyo, hold their domains on isolated regions of the material plane. While they have transcended their lesser incarnations to become something close to demigods in stature, not unlike the kami lords, they do not flaunt their power, and prefer to dwell in remote corners of Tianxia, enacting their plans through guile and subterfuge. These are the Oni daimyos. Akuma. Residing within the dense woods of northwestern Lingshen lies the Horn King's concealed pagoda. This enigmatic figure manifests itself as a sinewy oni boasting three eyes and seven imposing horns. His followers embrace a dark monastic tradition and engage in martial arts stances and routines with great diligence. His areas of concern are battle, honor, and martial arts. Chimon. Known as the hunter of blood, Chimon is a master of stealthy pursuits, adept at setting traps and orchestrating ambushes amidst the sprawling forest of spirits. His form, that of a flayed oni, oozes with arrows and constantly bleeds. He teaches canny warfare and instructs his followers to devise intricate ambushes and traps. His chief area of concern is hunting, but also traps and ambushes. Guyuku. 
In the depths of an underwater cavern among the perilous isles of southern Minata resides the Sea Devil, appearing as a one-eyed woman with an eel-like lower body. Her disciples conduct occult tea ceremonies by the ocean or while wearing blindfolds. Her areas of concern are tea, piracy, and sea storms. Inma. Inma calls herself the Empress of the World, her fortress hidden in a valley beneath the highest peak of Chuye. She presents herself as a dark-skinned, three-eyed, four-armed void oni. In her fortress is said to be a beautiful table, where she skillfully crafts delicate origami representations of all those who live under her dominion. Her areas of concern are origami, wealth, and servitude. Murona. Murona, the Dark Mother, is a slender oni with ashen skin, rumored to inhabit an underground complex beneath Minkai's capital. Her followers' meditations require them to contemplate a world without a rising sun. Her areas of concern are sunsets, eclipses, and unseen events. Nataka. The Red King resides in a scorched valley between the Tangma and Zahoi, and he manifests as a towering caldera oni with dual mouths and four eyes. His disciples meditate there amidst pungent incense within great rings of fire. His areas of concern are droughts, fires, and incense. Onmiyuza. The captivating Onmiyuza, known as the Dancer in Flesh, revels in physical pleasures, and he dwells below Goka. He manifests as a heavily tattooed three-eyed oni. His followers are also heavily tattooed, and as an obedience they trace their tattoos lightly with sake-dipped needles. His areas of concern are orgies, sake, and tattoos. Ushitora. The keeper of the Oni Gate in the remote rift of northern Kaoling is Ushitora, a four-armed void Oni who wields a jade and gold tetsubo and holds the knowledge of the gate's key and its ominous potential. His disciples bury keys in the earth, meditate on them, and retrieve them as part of their obedience. His areas of concern are keys and gates, but also earthquakes and sabotage. Uzume. Frozen within a glacier fortress in Tianxia's Wall of Heaven, Uzume is a snow oni, with frostbitten features, who entices travelers to their doom with the eerie winds of his realm. His followers meditate on the sensation of starvation and wasting in the frozen snow. His areas of concern are blizzards, frostbite, and starvation. Yabu. The lord of the Kazan caldera, Yabu, resides within a dormant volcano, appearing as a muscular caldera oni with tusks and stony skin. His followers meditate by burning effigies and inhaling smoke. His areas of concern are curses, broken promises, and volcanoes.